Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is November 23rd, 1938, and the title is Stage Robbery Evidence. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver the Lone Ranger. of the western United States is also the history of transportation. First prairie schooners blazed the trail into the new territory. Then came the Pony Express and the stagecoach lines. Finally, the railroad made its appearance. But in the more remote sections of the country, the stagecoach still survived. The armed guards who rode with the drivers fought it out with outlaws time and time again. Hold-ups were a regular occurrence until the cry of Hi-Yo Silver was heard throughout the west. And the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for law and order, a fight which only ended when crime was completely stamped out on the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Outlaws of your Hampton Mills! We've got to hurry! Hi, Silver! Away! As our story opens, a stagecoach is standing motionless on the trail between Ogden and Hampton Mills, while two men, both masked, hold leveled guns upon the driver, guard, and passenger. All right, mister, step outside here. You bastard cook, pass me green. You let him be. Shut up, driver, if you tell me what's good for you. Mr. Ames, if that's your handle, get out of that coach. Hey, you're the cooks that have been holding up the stage. Right quick at figuring things out, ain't you? Search him while I keep an eye on these other hombres. Sure. This is an outrage. Ah, this outlaw's got her in a living, though, eh? Now keep your hands raised while I see what you got in your pocket. You can't do that, mister. Ah, uh, nothing there. Unbutton that vest you're wearing. Let's see what's making that bulge in your shirt pocket. Oh, it's nothing there. Come on. When I report this to the sheriff, we'll be a long ways from here. Uh, I thought so. I'll take that wallet. That's cattle money. We ain't got nothing against spending cattle money. It's as good as any other, I reckon. Feels right hefty. You must have sold considerable cows. Anything else on them? No. Then turn around, mister, and climb back in. Hey, if you're the guard, open up on them fellas. And get drilled, sleepy. I ain't no hero. When I see six guns staring me in the face, I just want the fellow holding them tell. Which shows right good sense. How long are you crooks going to keep us here? We're leading up this trip already. You can get rolling right now. We'll even give you a start. <laughs> Quit scaring my horses. Get up there. Get up there. Get along. Get along. Here comes 
the stage. He's late again. Hi there, Sleepy. How's the trail? Any news from Hampton Mills, Ray? Oh, 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 oh. Where's the sheriff? Guy, where in blazes are you? Where's Ed Cardigan? Something the matter, Mr. Rain? There wasn't another hold-up, was there? Sleepy, what's happened? A hold-up, all right. Hold Come on, Pat. Yeah. We'll have to make a report. Yes, a second. Uh, I hope you ain't blaming me, Mr. Rain. Oh, I guess it wasn't your fault, Pat. Here's Mr. Fergus. Uh, one side, fellas. Let me through. What's the trouble here? Well, Grant, we wouldn't you have stayed those hell up again, and I was robbed of more than a thousand dollars cattle money. Uh, sleepy, how'd this happen? Why, well, just the same as the other time, Mr. Fergus. We never got no warning at all. One minute there was nobody near, and then the next they was riding alongside with us covered. Honest, Mr. Fergus, I never had a chance to get in a shot. Is that the truth? That's so, Grant. If they was to blame, I'd be the first to say so. But the way them crooks work is to keep undercover till the stage is by, then ride up from behind. You'd have to have eyes in the back of your head to know which way they was coming from next. Well, I reckon you know how sorry I am about this, Mr. Ames. But I don't know what I can do. Oh, it ain't your business to catch them crooks, Grant. It's the sheriff. Well, that'll catch him one of these days. Sleepy, why in blazes did this have to happen just when I had good news for you? Good news for me, Mr. Fergus? I told the company, with business getting better all the time, I'd have to have another man to help me in the office. They said it's you who I wanted, and you was going to be him. Oh, golly. But now I ain't. These hold-ups ain't done your record any good. But, Mr. Fergus, I can... Grant, you know as well as I do, Sleepy ain't been at fault. Uh, Mr. Fergus, if anybody's to blame, it's me, not Sleepy. I'm the guard, and it's my business to stop hold-ups. But Sleepy's the driver, and everybody knows the driver ain't supposed to put up a fight. Well, job is still yours, Sleepy. Less than the company objects. Gosh, Mr. Fergus. Sheriff's coming now. Hey, Ed, come here. I just heard some fellas talking about what happened to you, Mr. Ames. Tough luck. Sheriff, why don't you do something to catch them hold-up men? That's what I'm going to do. Uh, You're sure taking your time about it. Yeah? Well, right now, I got a good notion who they are. You have, Sheriff? You told Jennings and Mac Loomis. Then arrest them, why don't you? Uh, That's easy said. It's one thing to make an arrest... But getting a conviction is a horse of a different color. Uh, Mr. Ames, will you testify in court you could identify them fellas as the ones that took your case? Well, where are them uh, maps and all that? Uh, you, Pat, can you say it was them? Mm, not to swear it, huh? Uh, me neither. Uh, you see? Sheriff, if they can't be identified, there's another way to get a conviction. Yeah, what's that, Grant? Find them with some of the things they stole on them. Uh-huh. You make it sound like there's nothing to it but searching but them. Sheriff, don't Then how see? about the second time the stage was robbed? I picked up Mac and you saw not a quarter mile from where it happened. And there wasn't a thing on them. Not even the masks they used. Well, then most likely it ain't them. Uh, maybe. But if I was a betting man, I'd lay my cash it is. Well, come on in the office and we'll talk this over while Sleepy's making out his report. Right. You drive the stage round back, Pat. Sure, Mr. Fergus. Come on, man. One moment, Mr. Ames. Are you speaking to me, stranger? Yes. Go ahead, fellas. I'll be right with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's your business? Then fellas is waiting for me. I heard you telling about the holdup. Sheriff said he suspected two men by the name of Utah Jennings and Mac Loomis. You know them fellas, stranger? I've heard their names, that's all. Could you describe them? Say, you haven't got a lead on this, have you? I might have. It depends upon what those men look like. Well, that's just the trouble. They ain't the kind of fellas you can describe easy. They're just middling height and middling complected and middling everything. So if it was them that held us up with masks on, you couldn't tell them from anybody else. I see. Just where did the robbery take place? Well, I'd say we must have been about a mile the other side of the Red River Bridge. Would have taken the stage about an hour to reach town from there. That must mean the robbery happened just a little over an hour ago. Uh huh. That's the time I'd put it at. Thanks. A... Hey, hey, wait, stranger. If you know something, I'd I like, like to, to investigate first. If I find what I think I will, the sheriff will be told at once. The stranger who had questioned Ames walked slowly to the edge of town and hurried toward a grove of trees where a great white horse was standing. The lone ranger, quickly removing the disguise from his face, mounted Silver and rode to meet his faithful Indian friend Tonto. Oh, Silver! Oh, boss! Oh, boss! Tonto! Ah! Oh. Oh, you, do not wear a disguise. I took it off and put on my mask coming from town. Tonto! You remember those men we saw riding away from the stage trail? Uh Huh? They may have been the outlaws we came here to find. Why, you think that? The stage was held up just before we saw them. We must have missed the holdup by just a few minutes. Oh, that bad. I got a description of the two men the sheriff suspects. It wasn't very good, but such as it was, it seemed to fit the men we saw. Tonto, do you think you could follow their trail? Oh, that's not hard. Not only follow it, Tonto, but find out if they stop anywhere on the way. These are the men, I think they are. They were picked up once before by the sheriff right after a robbery. 
The sheriff found nothing on them. Oh. If the sheriff picked up the right men, that means they hid their loot as soon as possible after the holdup. Mm, that's right. If they did the same thing this time, I want to know it. If not, they've either got the money in their camp, or they're not the men we're looking for. Uh, let's go, Tyler. Get him up, Scott. Come on, Silver. so much smoke. With the smoke as a guide, anybody could find this camp. We find out? Yes. We've got to learn the truth about this. The only way to do that is follow through on every clue we get. Come, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Hey, who's that coming? Them, here. That way you are. Don't slap, Leather. Who are you? Hold the engine. Oh, 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 if you draw, I'll blast that gun from your hand. Better take it easy, Mac. Mac Lomas? Sure I am. I ain't got no reason to hide my name, my face either. Like you have, stranger. And you're Utah Jennings. Uh-huh, and what of it? Well, you've got reason to believe you held up the Ogden stage today and sold a thousand dollars from a rancher, huh? You what? Well, I'll be. You saw. These fellas think we're crooks. We'll soon know whether you are or not. I get it. You heard there was a holdup and come here to steal a cash from us, figuring we was the ones done the robbing. Well, stranger, that's the time you got fooled. Yes? We ain't outlaws, we ain't got enough cash on us to be worth stealing, and we don't know where there's any to be had. Then you shouldn't object to being searched. <laughs> Go ahead. We ain't stopping you. Search them, Tonto. I'll keep them covered in case it's a trick. <laughs> uh-huh. You're just wasting your time. But suit yourself, gents. Suit yourself. If you find nothing on them, Tonto, look through the saddlebags. Search everywhere around the camp. Tonto, do that. <laughs> it's all right, Redskin. Me and Utah keeps open house here. When the money's around, Tonto will find it. And if it isn't, then we've made a mistake and we'll be willing to admit it. But the search failed to reveal the money, and throughout the following week, no further clues were found by the masked man. In the meantime, Sleepy Hogan, the stage driver, had entered upon his duties in the office, where we see him now. It is evening, and Grant Fergus, the local manager of the stage line, and Pat Gallagher, the guard, are also present when... Pat, how's Charlie Barton making out a stage driver? He's doing fine, Mr. Fergus. <laughs> Pat, there's something I'm blame glad to hear. When I was driving stage, didn't seem like such hard work. But after drawing wages for just shining the seat of my pants in this year office, I wouldn't go back to the other for nothing. <laughs> I never thought you had a lazy streak in you, Sleepy. <laughs> How do you figure I got my nickname? <laughs> Say, this is a trip the bank at Hampton's is sending cash for the payroll down construction camp, ain't it? Uh-huh. And, Pat, you and Charlie better be blame sure you get that cash back here safe. Ain't the sheriff giving us no protection? Well, his plan is to follow at the stage with his deputies. Well, that ought to be protection enough. What I'm afraid of is that he'll get there too late to catch him hiding the cash. That's the whole blame thing. Find out how them crooks get rid of what they steal so fast, and there won't be no more holder. But like the sheriff says, that's something easier said than done. Hey, what's keeping Charlie? If the stages leave on time, you better be getting along. I'll take a look out the window. He's likely to be coming down the road now. Ain't like Charlie to be late. Here comes his missus. Ain't Charlie along? I see nothing of him. The way Grace is hustling along, I'm wondering if maybe something ain't wrong. Maybe he's took sick. That's her. Come in. Mr. Fergus. Say, Mrs. Barton, where's Charlie? He's been took away. Huh? Took away? What do you mean? Kidnapped. Kidnapped? What, what? Two men got him. He was just eating his supper when they called him to the door. And then they pulled guns on him and took him away. Mr. Fergus, you gotta do something. You gotta get him back. Well, who was it done it? He was mad. Just like the stage robber. Uh-huh. Might have been the same one. But why in thunder would they want Charlie? You will get him back, won't you, Mr. Fergus? Promise you'll find them. I'll do the best I can, Mrs. Barton. But this is work for the sheriff. Sleepy, this means you've got to drive the stage. Me? Oh, now, listen. You've got to. There ain't nobody else can, and that stage's got to leave on time. But, Mr. Fergus, I ain't a stage driver no more. You do like I tell you, or you won't be nothing around here no more. Oh. Doggone if you ain't lazy. Now get off of them shiny pants of yours and help me hitch up the horse. And hurry. Well, this one last time. Mr. Fergus. Come on, man. Don't you worry about your husband now. We'll tell Ed about this, and he'll have his deputies out after them masked fellas in no time at all. Oh, 
The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger heard that Charlie, the newly appointed stage driver, had been kidnapped... He raced to the small, well-hidden camp near Ogden where Tonto was waiting for him. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, What you find out? Tonto, I've learned just exactly how blind I've been. What you mean? Call your horse. Here, Scout. We were right when we suspected Mac in Utah. Huh? And this evening, they gave themselves away. Uh, what? What then do? I'll tell you where to ride, Tonto. But now we're heading for Hampton Mills. Come on. Get him out, Scout. Throughout the night, the masked man and Tonto rode toward Hampton Mills. They arrived shortly after daybreak and, taking cover in a grove of trees, waited for Lloyd Evans, the owner of the town's small private bank. We should be long soon, Tonto. Hmm. Hmm. Who's that fellow? Ryan, that way. That's that, Evans. Let's see if he stops in front of the bank. Huh? Him stop. And it looks as though he's taking keys from his pocket. Yes, that must be him. He's unlocking the door. Now, to stay here and warn me if anyone comes along. Huh? I want to talk to Evans alone, if possible. But it shouldn't take me long. Me? Wait. Front door. This mask is seen. I had to take that chance. Here we are. Evans! What's the... I've got to talk to you. Mask. I'm not an outlaw. Then what? I happen to know you're sending a payroll to Ogden by stage today. Then you're one of the stage robbers. If I were, would I let you know I was aware of the shipment? You come to steal it now, but you won't get it. The safe is locked, and I'm not opening it for you or any other crew. Keep the safe locked, but listen to me. You? Evan, uh... you've lost money before to the men who were holding up the stage. Twice. You want that money back? Of course I do. You won't get it back until the men who have stolen it are caught. Are you willing to help catch them? What do you mean? I mean just this. I have a way to trap them, but I've got to have your help. Oh, so that's it. Yes. You are one of those crooks. You probably got kicked out of the gang, and now you want to get even. It doesn't matter what you believe. All that matters is whether or not you will help. Go on. Talk, stranger. finally managed to convince him. Mm, that heat good. Now you'll have to act fast. The stage will be in town in two hours. You'll stay here only long enough to change horses, pick up passengers and freight, then start back to Ogden again. It not not take me long. Evans will be expecting you. After you've seen him, meet me just outside of town. I'll be waiting in that old arroyo to the left of the trail. Tonto, uh, Tonto, go now. And hurry. Get him up, scout. Oh, well, I've got an idea, too. Of course, we're going to have the surprise of their lives. Steady, boy. <laughs> and you and I'll be there when it happens. Come on, Silver. Steady till me and Mr. Evans can lift up this box. Stand still, you blasted no account critters. All right, Mr. Evans. Let's throw this cash up there. Grab hold. Up with it. Gosh, it's heavy. Give us a hand to steady it, Pat. Yeah. No, then. Oh, I reckon I'm getting old or something. But that chore was a chore. You're going right to Ogden? Just as soon as we see if we got any passengers. Hand me them reins, Pat. I'll be doggone glad when I'm back working in the office again. Have a good trip, boys. And steer clear of outlaws. We'll do that same. We hope. Get along with you. Get along. Get along. Get along. Stage, Mac. You can see it's just above them trees. I wonder where the sheriff and his deputies are. He's close enough to do any harm, and that's all we need to know. Better get your mask on, you two. Uh-huh. There. Mac, that's the beauty of being sort of plain-looking. Wearing masks and the kind of clothes that half the cow folks in the country wear. 
We ain't no easier to pick out from a couple hundred other fellas and a couple of blades of buffalo grass would be from a million of the same. Yeah, here she is. I'll get a chance to draw up the tightest first. Get up, get up there. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. What are you stumps after? Reckon you don't have to be told. Better watch to see them passengers don't try anything. I'll handle them. All right, Andrew, quiet down. Wherever you and the guard bring that cash box down here in pronto. The sheriff's close by. That's just why I ain't fooling with you. Get moving. Come on, Pat. Let them take the cash. The sheriff will get it back. And them with it. <laughs> hey, now. Thanks for the help, fellas. And seeing as how you're so willing, you can just carry the box back there and set it in the road. Hi, this you ain't po- something you crooks are going to be able to hide so easy. Suppose you let us worry about that. Get going. Yeah. Them passengers look like they're carrying anything worth the taking? Look, they don't look like they got the price of a square meal between a lot of them. <laughs> then maybe we ought to lend them some cash. Not by a plain side. Let them work for the cash, same as we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's far enough, you fellas. Come back here now and head for town. When you fellas are sitting behind bars, I'll be standing outside laughing at you. Come on, Pat. Gosh, I'm sure going to hate to tell Mr. Fergus about this. On your way. Get up. Get up now. Come on, you critters. Get up now. Anything the sheriff yet, you talk? No, but he'll be along soon. The chair's hit all right. Steady that. You bet it did. Throw away your mask and come on. There she goes. Mine along with it. Now let's see anybody prove we was wearing them. Yeah. Hey, there's the sheriff. Well, we ain't gonna run from him. No reason why we should. Hold on there! What's that on you, Sheriff? You look sort of red in the face. Utah. Maybe you had too much for dinner and ain't digested yet. That's enough of that. This is the time we caught you skunks right in the act. Huh? What's he talking about, Mac? Search me. You robbed the stage. We heard the shots and we even seen the stage just as it was pulling away. Now, what do you got to say to that? Me? I'd say that being a case, Sheriff, you ought to be looking for the crooks that done it. Ah. Uh, fellas, look around for the cash they stole. It's got to be around here somewhere. Uh, uh, mighty fine weather we're having, ain't it, Sheriff? Now, Mac, you know it ain't been fine weather. Why do you keep if saying you it is? If you two pole cats don't quit your smart alley talk, I'll jail you. Evidence or no evidence? Sheriff, maybe those two fellas are the ones you're looking for. Huh? Well, what fellas? Coming down the road there. Why, Thunder, one of them's mad. Uh, don't try nothing, stranger. You neither, Injun. Get your hands in the air. Uh, Yes, are you arresting these men for holding up the stage? What right of you? I asked you a question. Did you fellas find the case? Oh, yeah. No, but here's the mask they wore, Sheriff. You can't say we wore them. Stranger, who, who I am doesn't matter. Tano and I were the outlaws. It stands to reason we wouldn't deliberately ride into your posse. Oh, I and I still want to know if you're arresting these men or not. Blasted how in blazes can I without no evidence? I'm going local. I'd have bet my bottom dollar that this time we had to stop. Then, Sheriff, arrest them anyhow. But uh, the sheriff can't do that. Got to have proof again. Arrest them, Sheriff, and I'll get you all the proof you need. Taking the sheriff aside, the masked man explained his purpose, and the sheriff consented to make the arrest. But instead of jailing Utah and Mac, he took them to the office of the stage line, where, in company with Grant Fergus, he kept watch over them. Bless the Sheriff, you can't do this to us. Take these handcuffs off and let us go. You can't jail us without no proof. That's just why you ain't been jailed. I aim to handle things all right and proper. If I gotta have evidence to jail you, well, then I'll keep you fellas here instead. That ain't no argument. It'll do till I get a better one. And close that back door. Close him here. The door stays open. Sheriff, you figured the mask hombre was telling the truth? I know he was. I just never had the sense to see it till he pointed it out. What you call it talking about? Now, don't get excited. You'll find out all in good time. This ain't legal. Yeah, we are... That's it, Grant. Sure enough. Hey, what, what's the matter? What's happening? Just don't try to break away and you soon know. Over next to the table where the coach is, Sheriff. Uh-huh. That proves the masked fellow was right. Snake! There's many of them. Get him away! Help. Get him away! Help, we'll get that to death. It's sidewinders. Help! No, Snake won't hurt you. Yeah. Tell them. Pick them up and put them back in the box. Uh, uh, me get Snake. Don't touch them. They're poison. Get them away. Oh, there's one by my leg. Hey, help us. Well, the sidewinders, Sleepy. They've had their fangs taken away. <laughs> you couldn't get poisoned if you was bit by all of them at once. But what do you... Pat, you and Sleepy are going to jail. Wait. Look. You I... convicted yourselves. Look here, Sheriff. In the back of the stagecoach. 
They had a place built there large enough to conceal the cash box. And everything else they stole. But that ain't so. Everybody knows those mask fellows that held us up. The passengers will tell you that. It was a clever scheme, Pat. Your friends Mac and Utah held up the stage, but the evidence was never found with them because the evidence was always right here in this compartment. But today, I got witnesses can swear we just put the cash box out in the road. And why is the cash box here? What probably happened was, while the passengers thought you were putting the box on the road, you were really putting it in this hiding place. But we didn't You know. gave your scheme away when Utah and Mac kidnapped the new stage driver. You wanted the gold you knew was going to be shipped today. But to make your scheme work, Sleepy had to be driving. But I told Mr. Fergus I didn't want to drive. You I did just... that simply to disarm suspicion. I learned that Charlie was kidnapped. I knew that had to be the answer. It was the only possible answer that explained why your partners were always in the clear. And you knew there was only one chance in a thousand that the law would be close enough to actually see them hold up the stage. <laughs> so the masked fuller went to the banker and had him fix up this cash box. They put lead in it to make it way heavy. Then they put in snakes. And that saved us the trouble of keeping watch on you fellas to see when you'd come back with what was stole. <laughs> with the snakes in that box, all we had to do was sit back and wait for you to yell. Blast that mask fella. The sheriff from Hampton Mills Way is bringing down the real box of cash himself. And while I was holding them partners of yours inside, the engine back trailed and found where Charlie was hit. He's at home right now. Well, this was the last time we figured on stealing anything. And then we had to be caught. <laughs> and the best part of the whole thing is that the only thing you stole was snakes. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.